welcome everybody, Richmond Parish Council meeting. Um, we'll start with uh, apologies and reasons for absence. Um, Councillor Sykes is not around today, and our borough councillor Shilton is um, has a meeting overview and scrutiny. Ring any bells? Yeah, committee Rick. meeting at Ashford. Yeah, Rick Burgess is, was always on that committee as well, and he could often make meetings. And John is. Well, on the same while, although he's trying to sort that out. Indeed, he did bring me yesterday uh, about that, which was good. Um, and as far as Colin's concerned, do we accept his reason? He's away. Yep. Good. Um, declaration by members of any interest, pecuniary or other than, in accordance with the Code of Conduct. Yes, Sally. Uh, non pecuniary for the planning application, Van Sorg, north of Pin Court Road. I'm acquaintance of the missus. The one for the horses? Yeah. Right, gotcha. Okay. Um, other than pecuniary, you, it's up to you. You do not need to leave until you can play a part as you choose under our code. Um, although it's actually, you know, it's easy either way. Really. It's up to you. Um, the um, reminder that this meeting is being, there's no, uh, well, I don't have to approve or reject any applications uh, for dispensation because there are no dispensations under it other than pecuniary because there's nothing to be dispensated from. <laughs> um, I.e., you know, whether you don't have to leave the meeting or something, you know, that's how it works. A reminder that this meeting is being recorded and all being well, it will go on YouTube as usual if it works. We now uh, adjourn for the public session, um, which is for members of the public to express views or ask questions on relevant matters on the agenda. The public are welcome to stay and observe the rest of the meeting. You don't have to leave afterwards, it's entirely up to you, but you can't take part once the public session has ended. Um, does anyone want to talk about the planning application on the agenda, which is the one that's just been mentioned in Quarter Road? Okay. Um, I'm the owner of the listed building in the um, plan statement, Lordings. Um, You're Lordings? Yes. Right, okay. Lordings. So further down the hill. Uh, yeah. Actually adjoining, well, I think. Yeah, it borders where yeah. the, the land in question is. Um, I'm not particularly uh, a fay uh, with all the regulations. But I note in the um, planning statement that KDS, the architects, they make a specific reference to the distance to the listed building. Um, I just would like to try and understand, I don't know if you can help me, how, does the, how do the planners and how do you look at stuff like that in terms of protecting you know, a listed building? Okay, firstly let me say, I, and I don't think anyone else here is any different, I'm not an expert in it. And our general view is that we give a local view on planning applications in general. We're not planning experts either, which is a qualification in its own right at Ashford. Um, but when you get to listed buildings and the regulations of listed buildings, that goes further above our head. We take a, a sensible view, but what the people in Ashford or, or um, whatever they call English Heritage now, um, do on listed buildings is complex. Now, what I can say is for sure that the first thing with listed buildings is within the curtilage of the building, which would probably be taken, although you've got quite a big estate, even though bits were sold off. I know you've got about four houses out of one. <coughs> But nevertheless, no, you've got quite a big. You've got one, but I mean, different bits of the old, yes. the old lordings have all gone, haven't they? Here, there, and yes. everywhere, like the old of the, yeah. you know, the barn, Di divided up. Yes, um, the curtilage is the first test usually. Well, sorry, the curtilage is the first test, and that would typically be for an ordinary house would be the you know their grounds. Mm -hmm. But you know, like if you owned something absolutely huge, you know, they might say, well, no, we'll go within a certain distance. The second thing that they have as a word is the setting. So even outside the curtilage, they can say, does it affect the setting of the listed building? And a good example to prove that point was one down in Moons Green, where there was a listed building, 
then there was a bridal way, and then there was an industrial building. And when the industrial building was up for being converted into a house, which did get approved, the question was, did it affect the setting? And it wasn't in the curtilage, it was even across a bridal way. But they still had to go through a whole load of stuff about listed building and eventually it was, agree it was agreed it was an improvement. So, you know, that's about, I think, unless anyone else wants to come in, that's kind of the main thrust of those things. Now, you know, distance, sight lines, all the rest of it, that's the kind of things they will do. And I did notice that the plan puts the barn up the far end of that narrow entrance. It's not that wide, but it's at the far end from you, next to the other house. But of course they have the access by your house because that's where the gate is already. Yeah, I mean, all this, the, the, and it, I agree with you, it's a, a, at the moment, and I, again, I noticed that in the planning application, that it talks about no um, alteration to the existing gate, yeah. which is a very small gate. And I note that the scale of the proposed building talks about, you know, vehicles, tractors, horse boxes, blah, blah, blah. And that was a, a concern of mine, that the, the access on what is obviously a B road, yeah. a 50 mile an hour limit. Um, 60. 60, sorry, 60, stand corrected. You know, that, that was a, a little bit of a concern of mine, uh, that, you know, I'm not sure how I put that sort of point across, because I did, when I was reading, it's very hard to read the planning statement in its entirety and for it all to go in. But obviously when you're physically there every day, you know, you see that entrance and you go, okay, you know, the scow of the proposed building as well was a little bit of a, a concern of mine, considering <coughs> it says two stables, but I don't know what two stables equates to in number of horses, and then number of horses, number of vehicles, and, you know, I can go on and on and on, but I I, it's difficult for me to say, you know, or I totally object because I do know that there are uh, there's been one objection I think in terms of just the, the use of the land. I haven't made my decision yet, but um, yeah, the scale of the building was a, a, a little bit of a problem because you talk about site, you know, and it can clearly be seen from not only from my land but from my house, <coughs> which you know that's not to say it needs to be blocked, but I'm just concerned that the plans know those sort of things. Sure. I think it's very sensible that you, having thought your, you know, got, it, got your mind around it, that you put in as long a response as you wish on the Ashford portal. Yeah. In other words, don't rely on the fact that you've told us. Um, you need to put it in yourself. And that means going to Ashford planning, then find the, um, there is a number here on our agenda, which I guess you've probably yeah, got. Yeah, I've been now seeing and you know how to find yeah, it. Yeah. And then there is a place where you can put a, a, a comment in. And don't be shy about making it as long and as detailed as you want. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm all for progress. But it's, it's sort of like, you know, where does progress lead to as well? Which is a big concern of mine. I mean, it, it, apart from the other thing is it is AONB. <clears throat> um, and it happens to be a fairly sensitive bit of the AONB because I noticed that even from the height of the Google street map camera that's high enough to go over the hedge you get a very attractive view down the, the slope towards the the other hills as obviously you're yeah. used to yeah um yeah. now what i don't know about with the planners is how they balance aomb versus rural stuff as opposed to houses there the ashford are quite awkward about putting houses in but of course this is not houses this well it's a house for horses and I don't know if they see that in a different light, but it will be visible. I understand what you're saying. If you can see down there, you can see up there. Yeah, I mean, you know, as I say, it's like <clears throat> you can't stop everything, right. and you are in the hands of the planners. Okay. Um, maybe my concern is more about, you know, what it might be today and what it might be tomorrow, okay. uh, where it all leads to. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously, I think the, the, the owner of the land is purchased from Tom. Was out to the ten acres. Right, right. So it's a big field. Yeah, and you know um, that. Come and that's Tom who? That was Tom Hodge, the previous owner of oh. 
most of the Lord into the Oast and the barn, Anchor Barn. Oh, I see. And and the, so the owner who was pre- previous to you and had all of that bit also owned that field. Uh, yes, he did. That and I think he sold that early on or late last year or something yeah, like that. True. Okay. Um, okay. Um, thank you for that. Does anyone want to ask the gentleman questions? I, I would just reiterate that I'm not a planner or a planning expert either, but it might be worth <coughs> pointing out that the issue of um, uh, traffic on that particular piece of road is very live, and of course we've just recently been through all of that with the, the big um, double height um, garage for vehicles that's half completed now yes. for your neighbour, yeah. and we did express concern over that, and the splays, which are the viewing lines. Yeah. He seems to be very generous in his interpretation of how much land he's taken to build those splays. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but I just, I I just, I just, I just kind of flag that up. You, know, you might be, what's the, I'm trying to think of a suitable analogy, pushing water uphill with a rake. If it, 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 you, you, in, you have every right to say whatever, and I completely endorse what the chair said, but we just... That, I'm just flagging up what they're, they're yeah, doing. That, that the other thing, of course, is that the whole issue of enjoying a view and enjoying light in, in, in planning and what have you, we, we actually have much less rights than we think we should have. Yes. It's just one of those, those things. And also you'll find that change of use from agricultural to equestrian is not insurmountable. And the fact he's moved the, bar, uh, the, the American barn for two up, up the far end... Um, the gate, that's not going to be saying it. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be negative about it, I'm just kind of flagging out the things here. But I completely endorse that this is your opportunity to raise these concerns so that they're, they're taken seriously. And your point about the road and your pushback on the, you know, the garages that have been built, I know when um, I had road. some... Uh, when I had um, planning authorization for some garages, a big point was made on <coughs> internal turning circles so i.e. coming off of you know coming off of the road yeah. onto your land yes. and being able to turn around so that you're not reversing in and out onto that road mm. and i noticed that plan didn't really it wasn't that evident was it no <laughs> especially when you start talking about tractors and horse boxes and, yes you know stuff like that because it's yeah. literally yeah the scale the actual scale of the property when you look at it in conjunction with, you know, as I say, Lording's Anchor Barn and um, Lording's Oast, <clears> its its sheer scale is on the same sort of size as all of those three properties for two stables. It just seems well, over the top. To be fair, there has been significant development all around the Lording's estate from what it used to be. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, absolutely. Yeah, but but, yeah. but <clears throat> my point, no, being, fair, but my point yeah. being the scale of the building. I think the developments that you're talking in terms mm. of, if you're talking about you know, those three properties that I mentioned, they're more sort of like very small outbuildings, <coughs> not a very big barn. Okay. Oh, sorry, one last question as well. Um, again, talking about the, the road, I noticed the other day when I was leaving for work that there, there have been some sort of um, wires put across the road as if like you normally put them in, in conjunction with their checking usability and speed or something like that. Do you know anything about that? Yes, we do. Well, mm-hmm. we can surmise. Mm-hmm. We did have a go at KCC um, highways um, um, six, eight months ago, the two of us. We put forward a number of things that we would like to see. We're in, we are now, there's a system now that we're invited to put forward things we'd like to see once a year. So we did that. We had seven or eight things. Um, one of which was that we would like them to reconsider the speed limit along your way, right. which was put forward by the owners of Quarter House about four or five years ago okay. by the county member, Mike yeah. Hill. I went to that meeting and he put it forward and it was turned down by KCC at that time. Okay. We've asked them to have another look at that because... Since they said, oh, it wasn't um, valid to have it reduced, they've been popping up speed limits around here like a rash, as you know, often with less housing, less bends, less hill than you're on. Uh, so we felt that was wrong. Now, they had a, a look at it at the time, and their immediate reaction was, no, it didn't meet their tests. No surprise about that, but that's what they said. 
and we will, uh, the subject of councillors B, haven't done yet, but we will be trying to push them a bit further on that because there's no question that they have put 40 limits in elsewhere um, with less, on the face of it, less cause than Peening Quarter Road. So, they so, are doing a survey. Indeed, I'm sorry. Right. Yes, survey, so but they did the then say, but we will do a survey on actual speeds. Okay, and so that's, that's what, what they did for. Okay. One of the curiosities, which I find hard to understand, but this is what they say, is that they will only put a speed limit in which is pretty close to what people do already. In other words, if everyone's tearing along at 60 miles an hour <laughs> because they're allowed to, they won't put a 40 limit in because it's too low compared to the 60. But if everyone's doing 45, they don't mind calling it 40. It's bizarre. That's but that, bizarre. They're very clear about that. <laughs> so, that's very strange. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, we, we will continue on that. But that, as, as Yvonne has pointed out, that's actually the short answer to your question. That's what it is. And I'm glad to hear they're doing it. Great. They'll then come back yeah. and say, Bleh. They What they do is, by the way, they do mean speeds and they do what they call 85 percentile speeds, the speed at which 85 percent are at or below. Because there'll always be someone going along there at 70 miles an hour. Of course. Um, and of course, well, that's still beating 60, I know, but that's how, that's how they do it anyway. Okay, thank you. That's, yeah. Anybody else got points? No. Do you know the Gallon, Sister Mrs. Gallon? No. Oh, I just no. wondered if you had the chance to talk no. to them about no. it. No, I mean, no. you, you know, I don't, I, I don't know where they live. Like, no. you know, uh, I know that I think they've got a connection with the person who's my neighbour in Anchor Barn. But um, no, I've had no occasion with the, with the camps at all. Okay. Right. Um, do you want to talk to us about your concerns, Stephen? Yes. Uh, the, uh, the, the field south of Buds Lane, uh, a long time ago, was sold off into strips. It now seems to be majority owned by Mr Gladwish, who has sublet it to a pig farmer or a pig man. And um, this was in November last year, and uh, he has since then erected various um, pens for the, the pigs. We went, got in touch with uh, Ashford Borough Council, and they did come out, Sophie Harding came out, uh, on a couple of occasions actually, um, and her, her opinion was that because it's a field, it's agricultural, and because pigs are agricultural, um, there's no breach of the Article 4, which we believe to be in force on that site. Um, he has since then put a little bit of uh, what we would call more permanent uh, fencing in, in, just inside the entrance to the field. But our concern at the moment is more about the rubbish that he's accumulating there. Um, I had a, a report from a neighbour that, that there's been asbestos put down there, there's... Um, Fridge freezer down there, a marquee's been put up with bedding in it so that he can uh, stay there, um, and radiators and barbecue and goodness knows what else. So, and uh, more recently, um, old pallets and metal tools. Now, this is almost like fly tipping on his own land, and as this area is an outstanding in an area of outstanding natural beauty, I think it's um, going against the the. Speaking of the, the understanding of what should be going on down there, I don't think we're ever going to get rid of the pigs. I think he's got the right to put the pigs there. They are being moved around the field so that the, the structure, there's a pit, the pens that he's building are made of pallets, but I think he moves them around. Obviously, the, the, the pigs churn up the land, so they need to be moved around. But there is this concern about the rubbish. Do you think that he has got rights to the extra strips? I thought he just got one strip. Well, I think he's got rights rather than he's just. He's, he's um, using an awful lot of people's. Yeah, he's using an awful lot of the land. But it seems that Mr. Gladwish, who is the landowner, actually now owns a good percentage, a large percentage. He's been of buying them up, has he? Yeah, because we believe that uh, Mr. Parsons down at Bud's house owned several strips there. Um, in fact, it turns out he only owns one. All right. Are these what, the, exactly the pigs that were in the um, the field behind 
number one buds next door to the garden no, of Robin's no, 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 that was just completely separate. No. They're a completely separate operation. Yes, yeah. that was a different piggery. Mm. So that, they're, no, they're no longer a concern? No. Um, the couple who ran, who owned number one, um, left. They, they certainly rented property um, and they left. We believe, perhaps, because they were successful in, in securing a small holding. It's not the, not the field that uh, we're talking about. So that land has now been overgrown and just returned to nature. And, and, and is the, the, the concern of the pigs exactly equivalent to the concern that existed there? Or is it no, a different uh, concern? Uh, uh, we have to accept it. We as residents have to accept it, that the pigs are agricultural, the field is agricultural, and he therefore has... Uh, a right to put the pigs on this land. <coughs> Our concern at the moment is, um, and so therefore he is not in breach of Article 4, which uh, is in existence on that field. Our concern now is, is the state of the, the amount of rubbish and other things that he is effectively flighting, even though it's on his own rented land. See, I don't think there's any law against that, is there? It's very difficult. But it's in an area of outstanding natural beauty. I mean, the comparison I'm thinking of is down at um, Maytham Farm, you know where that is. If you go down on the way to Roland and towards the railway mm. and you turn left, there's a farm down there. And it's, you know, it's an AOMB and so on, but I mean, there's no end of dead tractors and <laughs> dead, dead, almost any other machinery. I mean, great fields of it. Mm. And I know there's been a representation about it, and I know Roland and Parish Council looked at it and said it's not our business. Uh, it's my understanding, Zina, um, from your neighbour, that um, DEFRA were called in as with the RSP. Yes, um, actually, as I understand it from uh, Sophie Harding at, uh, at Ashford, that um, she, she understands that the uh, pig man actually called in DEFRA for advice. Oh. Um, but they did attend, and I was there when they did attend. Not there, I was um, in, in at home when they attended. Unfortunately, um, they were not English, and their English was not that brilliant, but I managed to obtain from them that they were DEFRA. Um, and he has uh, apparently called in other help as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty squalid sort of mm -hmm. setup. I, I also say. understood from your neighbour um, that. The fencing that is using as pens um, could almost be termed more like permanent than. Yes, I mean, it's been. And that's the concern that, the, yes. according to Article 4, you're not supposed to put up fencing. I have photographs. Yeah, I think, it, you know, as I said, he was using pallets. I haven't been down there myself for, for various reasons, but he has been using pallets and effectively they could be dismantled and moved around, which is, as I say, that he needed to do to move the pigs around. But I'm getting the impression that he's perhaps a bit more permanent structures now. Well, the fact that he's taking... Because you, he's got to walk all that way. I mean, it, there's no vehicle, vehicle access, and it's quite a, a tricky and long path to get yeah, down from Red Lane to down there, yeah. his bit of land that he's using. And the fact that he's taken the fridge freezer and big radiators down there. Um, I think one of the concerns is it's not what he's doing now, it's a little bit like your concern. Yes. Okay. What happens in the future. The other thing is you made a comment about this trench that he's uh, constructing. And he's, and, he's, and he's digging a trench towards the standpipe that belongs to, uh, we think it belongs to Piper. Um, well, he's, he's, got no water, he's got no water down there for the pigs. No, and uh, that's been one of the concerns about the, the health of the pigs. But um, the standpipe, it may be if it's in the field opposite the houses, is that actually belongs to Charles Parsons at Bud's, Charlie, Bud's house. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he'd be very impressed if somebody started um, siphoning off water from his, uh, sure. his standpipe. Sure. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I just wondered, almost going back to the previous, Conversation. Has anyone been down to have a word with him? I think it's a little bit. He's, he's not been particularly yeah. receptive. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's no, often the first line of advice that plant local authorities would give for, in neighbour disputes. Yeah, sure, thank you. To say, look, can you just go and have an informal chat? Now, if he tells you to disappear, mm -hmm. in, or similar words to that, 
or if some sort of firearm gets produced, then you might want to be to hasty retreat. <laughs> yeah, but I just wondered if anyone had reached out to them. No, I mean, well, one example was that he has he parks his van in um, at the gateway to the track that leads down to the field. Right. That gateway happens to be the turning um, site for all vehicles using Buds Lane, uh, the houses further up Buds Lane, uh, delivery vehicles and all the rest of it. His van obstructs that nicely. So people have actually approached him and said, you know, look, uh, you know, could you move your vehicle? And have not been particularly uh, perceptive to that, let's put it that way. So he, 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 kind of, he kind of holds a bit of an ace in his hand with that, doesn't he? It's what, sorry, did he own the entrance? No, the, no, no I, nobody no. quite knows who owns the, oh, right. the track. That's <laughs> okay. Yes, that, it, we've had problems it's in the past. It's not clear he even has rights over the track. We were asked about the yeah. question years ago when yeah. the previous fellow built the uh, big the chalet house. and had to yeah. knock it down again. Okay, okay. Um, general point. Um, I mm. was told some while ago by Ashford, by the chief exec there, that they were going to reorganise their enforcement section. I haven't heard that it's been done yet. Right. They, there have been lots of complaints from other parish councils at the Ashford meetings about enforcement being very weak or non-existent, and I'm hoping that they are going to do something about it. But it's part of the planning department. The planners in the planning department are coming and going like, you know... I think like that's been historical, hasn't it? All the time. Um, the, the other thing is that I know when uh, Sophie Harding came out, um, she was... Um, extremely busy. Sure. So I suspect that that's. That's all, doesn't help. No. Okay, I think we'll call a halt on that unless there's anything else that the two of you would like to raise. Otherwise, I'll close the public session and then we'll talk about what we'll do the planning first. So we'll leap ahead to the planning after we've done the. Um, yeah, we can do that. yeah, we've got to confirm the minutes and then we can leap ahead to the planning. So feel. Well, very welcome to stay at least for that or as long as you wish. And then we'll do the item on the piggery. Oh, right, okay. Uh, and again, you're welcome to stay on afterwards, but we'll at least do those first. So we'll adjourn the public session. Oh, sorry, you did ask a question, but I think Eamon answered it, yes. which was to show you where the yeah. land was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll close the public session. Um, we need to confirm the minutes of the last meeting, which Eamon sent out earlier. Is everybody happy with them? Can I say no? Yes, everybody happy. Good. Yeah. to the planning application 0947 of this year, the land north of Peening Quarter Road that we've heard about from the gentleman. Who would like to start us off on that? I have to admit, when I first looked at it, I was concerned about the listed building. Mm -hmm. But I actually think it's far enough away, it's not going to cause any problems. So I'm quite happy with it. Okay. I don't really have a strong view on it either way. I appreciate your concerns and um, I'm sure in your position I probably feel the same. But as you say, Jeremy, it doesn't really, it's not an issue usually with planning, with the planning department, is it, on how it affects views and light. I don't think that will probably be the thing. The, the listed building uh, and the uh, setting is probably the, the one the that's thing. most difficult and they will they will have to consider that. Mm. Um, and I think uh, perhaps we will draw their attention to that. Mm. They should know anyway, mm. but we draw their attention to that. We can we can say the representation have been made, which they have. Um, I mean, my, having heard what was said earlier, um, which I hadn't thought about really was yeah I mean the access. That, that, that's that's the concern. Concern. I mean, yes. that's the other thing. If they're big, you know, if there's big, bigger vehicles. Where, where have they thought about 
inserting the gate so you can yes, put yes. off the main road mm. with horse box yes. to open the gate and vice versa when you're coming out that rather than be waiting yeah. on the main road to yeah. get into that, that gate. Would, that would be sensible. They've yes, got the room, would. but the mm. gentleman's explained that actually it's not in there mind at the moment, no. either width or... Because it is actually on a slight bend. Mm -hmm. there I mean, well. the first thing about access is to leave it in the same place on the road, not necessarily the gate in the same place. Um, another anxiety is that Kent County Council have got themselves in a bit of hot water lately by saying that they feel that their job is to approve um, plans. Now, they were talking about houses, not stables but they feel that their first responsibility is to approve them and that they aren't going to generally make a lot of fuss about things, although they have assured us that they'll take a professional view. But basically the message was, don't ask us to keep refusing things because we aren't going to. Um, the curiosity there, of course, is that that access is just another step towards reducing the speed limit. But we've got two aims there. One is to get the speed limit the other one is to consider whether it's the right plan to have. And it's, I don't Can I go to have anything to add to the Lord yeah. Peter? I, no, notwithstanding what the gentleman said earlier on, I do understand that my advice is to you know make his submission there. I don't think from a planning point of view, it's it's not change of use to residential or industrial, it's change of use from agricultural to equestrian. Um, the, I looked at the size of the American barn, given the fact it's not just stabling, it's also keeping feed, hay and what have you. And to me, it, it just looked, I mean, it's been a weekend on a, a different farm, it looked like it was sort of pretty, pretty standard stuff. And, and, and I thought that the covering note that we got, which was um, po pointing out that uh, it was in that position so to minimise disruption to, to all the neighbours around in terms of light, noise and what have you, I thought was very considered. So I, I can't see any reason to, to say if, on a planning point of view, uh, to object. It does potentially, I suppose, and this is a wink I don't know, it does potentially open up the possibility to turn it into a conversion to residential later. Well, so that really, that's all over the island, Jeremy. We've been all over that with so many different applications. Mm -hmm. It's no different really to the bloke who's half built his garage. Next thing is it'll be, you know, got a two-storey thing on top of that. It's got a separate driveway, a beautiful brick entrance. Bingo, you've got another house. Mm -hmm. The trouble is, that's the that, well, the trouble is, what might happen in the future yeah. is really not relevant to, yeah. to the planning discussion, and, and I and I and I completely understand why people have views on excuse the pun on the view and the area and what have you. Um, but I think our duty is to look at the uh, from a planning point of view and encourage individual residents where they feel very strongly to make those representations, and and, and that avenue is is there, and it's worked very well in the past. Okay, so can I suggest then that we, we, we do a narrative uh, to say that um, it is a drawing of the building and the representation has been made on that, but that's one for the listings officer to think about, that we have anxieties about the access in through the gate, um, which is now on a tricky road, and so far KCC have refused to reduce the speed limit. Despite, I mean, let's face it, there's about 20 other gates along there, but, you know, this is another one. <coughs> and not only one they're going to drive cars in and out of, but they're going to drive horse boxes in and out of, presumably. I mean, a car with a horse box behind it, which obviously is a, a trickier manoeuvre altogether. Exactly what's going on down the road at Hope Farm. Yeah. And but, but maybe the access and Simon's, is and Simon's trailers. Yeah, I mean, this is a narrow I think the thing that the, 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 the sort of thing that strikes me is that how can we use this to the advantage of our campaign to reduce the speed limit there? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's something that mm -hmm. if we make that point, I think that we should remind the council, the planning authority that is a listed building, never ever assume that they've spotted that, no. um, given their paucity of resources at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably all we can do. Okay, so we're um, we're supportive with concerns, if you like. We have, we have no objection to having the stables, but we have concerns about some of it as such. But we have concerns about those other issues that should be taken into account. I think we, just for the benefit of uh, uh, our visitor, we should say that the amount of notice they take of us is fairly modest, as mm -hmm. in. We, we do agree sometimes, but that's by coincidence.
<laughs> right, okay, now the pickery. Um, the, the Article 4, as I recall, um, and Ashford did go to the High Court on that a few years ago after you um, got them wound up, uh, and also Charlie Parsons. Um, they did go to the High Court and got an injunction at the time, and that was to defend the Article 4, which I think is essentially against structures, which is what that was. It wasn't piggery, it was, it was a cabin. Yes, it, uh, it was um, a hut. Yeah. And um, the Ashford Borough Council went to the High Court for an injunction. Um, Sorry, and, I should have said that we, we've kind of dropped mm -hmm. into a, <laughs> another adjournment by accident. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the injunction, uh, which they obtained just uh, before Easter, which was actually a major achievement, was in respect only of that particular site. The Article 4, as I understand it, applies to the whole oh, field. Absolutely. Okay. And apparently, as I understand it, because uh, I did check some time ago, that is still in force. Yeah, oh, the Article 4 is still in force. Uh, yes. Well, I don't think it's been removed, but even if it could be. Um, okay, we're back in the council meeting, um, and sorry for that, um, giving you that opportunity. Um, Article 4 is about structures. If they start building fences, that might breach it. Um, pigs, I assume, does not, because it's so it's agricultural. Um, mess, I suspect, is difficult because it's all in principle removable, except if it becomes a waste offence, and that's the environment agency, and they're not terribly active either. If you if you start running the risk of having discarded it on your land without a license, then you it's a, it's a bit of feed, but um, they will. Um, I don't think the environment agency are very active, but if it got really out of hand, they might be able and willing to do something about that. Um, I think what Stephen's been asking us to do perhaps is to support him in. Um, pushing Ashford to do more about it or to take more interest in it. Is that something people want us to, to do? Can I say something, Jeremy? Please because do. I did go and have a long chat with Stephen's neighbour, Ray Pilcher, and um, I have got um, well, the documentation you have, Stephen, I did read through it. And the understanding I got from it was that Back at the beginning, Gladwich actually bought the land and then divided it into strips with the intent of marketing it to be sold as those strips, as he has done in other areas locally and even as far away as Dorset. And what, his, um, what has happened in a couple of instances is that caravans are put on each strip and you know, for, um, from there they become really um, not that dissimilar perhaps, Alan, to what's happening at uh, Maiden Farm. So I, I think there's also, I know that we're very restricted as to what we can do, but it's sort of a, a warning signal that um, this is what could happen and it's going to be, a, you know, then it's going to be a really major eyesore on that part of the landscape, which you can see from across the marsh, sure. um, as well as down from the top of the lane. Um, so I, I know there's not very much we can do, but I think if at least we can make okay. strongest objections we can and just be a nuisance about it. We'll do that. If people are happy with that. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, can I just ask uh, do we Do we have to say whether or not the pigs were okay? Because the RSPCA were called. I had a quick look now. The pigs are okay. Those are the, that's yeah. what's going on. That's of any interest to anybody. Uh, but those are the sort of um, structures that have been put up. And there was something that could have been that asbestos waste down there. You know, that's the British reason. It's difficult, isn't it? Because you know, he, he, I mean, the fridge, it's just, it's the fridge just, freezer doesn't look like it's life in it, doesn't it? No, but what's oh. it doing down there? You'd have to, you'd have to drag it five hundred yards or whatever it is down the hill. It's, it's just, it's just the, yeah. it's just 
the external fencing, if you've got animals on an agricultural piece of land, you know, you've got to keep the fence. It's the concern like about what the long, longer term, yeah. probably what's going to happen. Well, well, I will try yeah, and do it put together yeah, some yeah. form of words on that which can be speculated. If yeah. have other thoughts. How, how, how comparable are these pigs to the ones, the, one I, the ones I mentioned before? I know there was concern, for instance, that they, they weren't housed properly and there were quite a lot of, I was just looking through the correspondence, I had pertaining to the ones just below Robin's Wood. Well, I thought that the ones at, uh, at, at Robin's Wood and that uh, house, the land behind the house, um, there was they were in proper shelters. Yeah. Um, they were well looked after. Yeah. The lady who um, tended to them, we lived in number one, and so she was on site all the time. She became a qualified butcher to actually. Um, you know, take the whole process through it and to sell the, the resulting produce. Um, so I think that they were in, uh, extremely well looked after. Mm -hmm. I can't say the same about the the the, the uh, pens and the state of the pigs down at uh, the field. Okay. I mean, the, pro the problem there was that they, in the garden of Robinswood there was a holiday accommodation and it was within 10 feet of the boundary where the pigs were. Okay, and that was the whole difference, that that was being done in a residential garden. Yeah. And this yes. Is, yeah. Yeah. yes. Okay, let's move on from pigs okay. then. Thank you. Um, right, back to our agenda then, and we're then on matters arising. Um, the ACRK update, um, all I can offer there, I think, is to say that there had been a hope for a grant coming through a foundation that seems to have links to KCC to provide some seed money to form a new organisation to set up in place of the ACRK that's disappeared. That grant, there's a lot of work done, I think, by the consultant who thought they were being very encouraging, but then it was refused. And she was going to try and find out why, um, get some feedback, don't know the answer. So ACR It had the support of DEFRA. It had the support of the whole panel, but it was sent to, um, the suspicion is it was the decision of one person and it was political. I have heard a bit of that, yeah. But it, it, I mean, she is going to appeal it. Indeed. There doesn't seem to be an appeal mechanism, but she can obviously have a poke at it. Yeah. Um, I suggested that that just puts the thing back on KCC if it's not being washed through their charitable funds that come, you think, from the government, then yeah. they'll have to find it somewhere else. Mm. It's their problem. Okay, the Highways Improvement Plan update. Uh, I'm afraid we haven't formulated it for me. I haven't formulated a response to KCC yet while I've been doing those other papers. Um, there was a concern raised with me today, this morning, from a resident down Peening Quarter Road about the horses and saying that she thought there was an accident waiting to happen there with the children. Um, and I was able to say that that's the one thing that KCC were positive, relatively positive about, was putting up signs warning, warning of people, warning people that there could be horses. But of course, that's only half the answer, but at least it's something. Uh, the must shelter update. What have you got to say there? Well, only that after the last meeting, we were going to try the advertising in the wilderness ad, but when we looked at it, we couldn't find an appropriate heading. So we tried the checker trade, and I did get a response from that to say somebody was interested, they would contact us, but they didn't. But they did give a telephone number, so I've tried that, but that seems to go via checker trade, and it just rings out and never comes back to me. Um, well, we haven't really got any further than no. we were before with the original yeah. people that were interested. Or not, yeah. The trouble with Weird and Ad is we can put an ad in Weird and Ad, but unless it goes in an area where people who are looking for work go and look at, we're just wasting our time and money. You know, there's 30 pages or whatever of small ads, and unless there's something for mm -hmm. sort of, you know, construction opportunities or something, people won't be looking at it. And there isn't. Has it gone in the outlook magazine? I don't think we did the outlook, we did next door. I think the outlook on obviously might be worth trying because mm -hmm. otherwise we look we could be sitting here in the middle of winter, nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. And you know, personally I'm drifting more towards this guy, I think. 
mm. replacing it. I mean, if we can't get anyone remotely interested in renovating and repair, it's extraordinary. Yeah. I, I, I find it. You know, I'm just, I'm staggered. It's Times great. we live in. Yeah. Um, Greg doesn't want to take the project on, does he? Well, well, you didn't make it clear at the beginning you didn't wish to. Yeah, but is it worth kind of saying... <laughs> well, yeah, what we've got to <laughs> We're slightly stuck. Because well, he, did, he was a good stuff. project manager for the poll. Sorry. Yeah. Well, yes, but so, we should do it again. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, my suggestion is that we do look at Outlook. Where else could we promote this? The problem with taking somebody we know well is that if something goes wrong, then we're all... Yeah. Get, we all get head and hands in, don't we? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. Well, we'll continue trying to make progress. Yeah. It went in Facebook on Facebook as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the Swan ACV update. Uh, Leslie and I went to the Swan last week uh, and we had a, a chat with Kevin Gillespie. We heard the gospel according to Kevin. <laughs> uh, and he was relaxed about the ACV and you're submitting it any time. It's all done, it's, but uh, just didn't want to do it before telling him. Well done. Um, right, insurance cover update. Okay, I spoke to the BHIB, our brokers. Um, they advised that the cover for um, you should be on um, the Village Hall insurance, not BHIB. Um, although there seem other people seem to have some doubt about that, that's what they told me. I spoke to Sam uh, Collins, who was going to check their insurance policy because it's due for renewal at any time soon. That's, that was a couple of weeks ago now. And uh, also, our brokers said that their policy, which was an interesting point, should definitely be in the name of the trustees and not the village hall. And we don't know, I don't know, because you have to go and check. And I haven't seen her since what the answer to that was. What I did do then was ask the sports club where they stood and they've come back and said it's definitely in their case in the names of the trustees, which is what it should be. It's still a question of how, what they underwrite, but at least in the names of the trustees, you're, you're halfway along. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting on that being progressed, I'm afraid. Right, we've done the planning application. Um, so we move on to uh, reviewing the financial regulations that we deferred last time. Uh, you've seen a draft um, of new financial regulations written to match our own system. And then the model which comes from the National Association which really is trying to do something for everybody from big to small. Um, we agreed last time that I would go through and try to fill it that so that it would fit us best but it would be an appendix, sorry, an annex to our own regulations so there's a lot more words in it. It would give us guidance rather than firm regulations because the problem is that there are a lot of things in there that we are unlikely to have the resources to do. So we have our own regulations which is basically the way we run our own system which we think is secure and then there's um, this other one now I've sent you a copy with the chat changes mm -hmm. of what I suggested there. That's Annex A and then Annex B would be the um, delegations that we agreed some months ago. I did look at them again today. I haven't sent them out again. I think there's one or two tiny amendments which I need to pass by you. But essentially we've got delegations at the minute. I think we could slightly amend them to form part of this collection. Um, also because we're going to talk about uh, deposit account later and we'll want to change it for that as well. But given all of that, are people happy? Does, all, does anyone have any concerns that they want to raise about the drafts that you have seen uh, of the financial, the new financial regulations, and the Annex A guidance, which is the filleted version of the long elk paper? 
no, I think, well, from my point of view, I think you've done a very mm-hmm. fitting mm-hmm. job. Yeah. Well, so well done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if anyone looks at it right now, they would think the silks and fillers to do, but that's not a criticism of you. But if they did start off, to use the analogy, it's an enormous fish. So uh, where we are now, and I would say that having looked through it, it it's very comprehensive. Um, uh, and I just was going to ask, has our, is, our, is our new auditor OK? <coughs> Because to a certain extent, he will be the new intelligence it. hasn't expressed a view because it had not passed it. Uh, right. Not not only really, well, two reasons. Firstly, because I haven't seen it that way. He's internal auditing what we yeah. do rather than advising us. In fact, there's even a, a clause in the main guidance I think which says he, the internal auditor must play no part in the <laughs> processes of the council. So no, I, 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 that's, that's I mean, right. I just, I just based on view, but he shouldn't yeah. help us. But based on his, um, based on his first uh, um, communication back to us, I was very impressed. I did with with Roger's uh, yeah. level of detail, but the, but, the, but the language he used to make suggestions, I thought was helpful. Sure. So True. maybe you know he's obviously got an eye for this sort of detail. It sure. Might be useful for him to just sort of Indeed. you know ex officio almost have a quick quick deco I think. Okay. Well. As we stand at right now, um, apart from the fact that the delegation will change another month, or be the July meeting or the September meeting, um, <coughs> apart from that, which which will simply extend the delegation that we already have slightly, um, then does anyone have any other concern other than what Paul and concern? It's a response. So, uh, if we're going to adopt these, then can I have a proposer, please? Leslie, it. seconder? Mm. Sue? Yeah. Is everybody then in support of adopting these as our financial regulations? Yeah. And what Yvonne's then got to do is give you a clean copy um, of it all together, because you've seen the one with the uh, track changes on so far. Okay, good, thank you for that. That's something that's been a long time coming. Mm. Right, to review the inventory of land assets and office equipment, what we normally call the assets register. Now, we looked at it last time, we raised some questions, and I suggested um, to great uh, 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 approval from my neighbour here that she should go through, uh, look through it, and change it and tidy it up a bit. And I'm glad to say that she did a great job on that. Um, are people happy with what it's, it's, it's hugely improved. I mean, I don't know every sort of little detail in there, but it seems to me now to make sense and have things in the right order and what have you. Also, some of the old gloss has been taken out on the basis that we don't have it anymore or we don't know what it is. A um, lot of work. Mm. So a great job at Yvonne. Yeah. Um, there was a little aside here, which I, I will be, by the way, when we get to the audit, but let's just talk about this bit. I will be responding to Roger's report, which was very helpful. One of the points was about this, mm. and he was <coughs> querying why it is that we hold everything in our books at acquisition value, and that is the rule for us. It's, I, we all know it's bonkers, but that is the rule. We do not depreciate our assets. We keep them at whatever we bought them for until we throw them away. <coughs> Just a system. <coughs> and I will explain that to him. So, is everybody happy now with our asset register? Yes. Can I have a proposer? Alan, a seconder? Paul, everyone okay that I sign it? Good. <coughs> <coughs> Now we're going to look at the paper that you've seen in draft, the use of deposit fund for the council's reserves. Um, the first thing then is what people think about that approach. At the moment, if you recall, our money is all still sitting in current accounts. It didn't matter very much when we got no return on it anyway. 
but now interest rates are quite decent. Um, uh, we have come upon um, uh, an organisation I did because I was at the National Association, uh, sorry, the uh, Kent Association's uh, annual general meeting <coughs> last year, and I came upon the CCLA um, Public Sector Deposit Fund. Um, I know of the CCLA because our county association invested some money with them. Yes, please, no problem. Uh, in the case of the in the case of the public sector deposit fund, I've made inquiries, which we agreed I should do last month, and um, they have got. I did write it down here somewhere. What they've got about three billion pounds invested in it from eight hundred local authorities, of which five hundred are towns and parishes. Um, it's specifically only for local authorities and charities. I take it, that's why it's called CCLA, C for charities, the other C for something, and LA for local authorities. Um, <coughs> it's, a, it's a money market fund, um, but the money market, their deposits are made then in bank, um, bank deposits via certificates, certificates of deposit, um, which are never longer than three months. Uh, it's withdrawable on demand, presumably on the basis that not everyone wishes to withdraw at the same day. Um, but it is essentially on demand. They don't have a, an issue. There is a lot of money there and there's a lot of liquidity. And the amounts do bounce up and down. I think the people Ashford invest in it, Tenterden invests in it. Tenterden has got about a million pounds in there at the minute. So um, nothing is ever definite, but there's a lot of, a lot of people relying on it. It does not have the government guarantee that you know the Barclays Bank does for a maximum of eighty five thousand. Um, on the other hand, at the moment lately, I haven't looked today, but up until a week or two ago, it was paying over four percent, whereas Barclays probably pays. <coughs> so, firstly, as a general principle, are people happy with us adopting this? and putting money into the CCLA. It'll have to be, by the way, via a full application, which Yvonne has to make out, and I probably have to sign with her. It then gets validated by them to be able to open account, an account in the first place. So that's the first thing. Are people okay with that? Yes. Yeah. I have a proposer. Paul proposed, second. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie, everybody else, good? Yeah. So we will go, we will, we will set out to open a CCLA account, which apparently takes about 10 days. Having got an account open, let's work on the basis that that happens, then what I would propose is that um, there's a minimum investment of 25,000 in the first place. <coughs> what I would propose is that Yvonne, having got an account open, would move probably just a tenner, because it's done by bank transfers, just a tenner to make sure that everything goes well and it turns up. They say that they are willing to do that, they understand the issue. If that is okay, um, then I would propose that she moves 25,000 in there um, and see how that goes and then repeat the process. Are people happy with that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have a proposal for that. Yeah. Paul and seconder. Yeah. Sue. Yeah. Everyone's happy. Okay. So that should move us in the right direction, which we can do before our next meeting. Yeah. I'm hoping if if everything goes at you know at decent speed, and we'll be making progress on that because it is <coughs> um, uh, it's something we shouldn't just let uh, lie any longer because. You know, interest rates and inflation have shot up. It has taken us a couple of months to get ourselves around, so we'll be making progress now. Good. Ah, uh, you know, yes. Um, land south of Buds Lane, the, the piggery, possible contravention of Article 4 of the Town and Country Plan. We've done it. Internal Auditors Report. Okay. We. Um, 
we got uh, <coughs> Roger Parker to do the internal audit this time because our usual internal auditor was unable to do it, David Chesson. Um, Roger um, appeared to be a suitable internal auditor. I mean, there are um, things in those the guidance notes that we've already covered about uh, it needing to be somebody who's kind of into that world. They don't have to be an accountant, but they have to be into that world. Roger, in his long War Navy career, has had to deal with service accounts, uh, and he has a, another private interest where he's been involved in the accounts. Um, as you will have seen, he gave us a very good report. Um, he found that the accounts were very well kept. Uh, he came up with a few ideas and points um, which were perfectly fair to raise, although there are answers to them, such as, for instance, um, the, um, um, the, the way the chairman's expenses, as he calls it, it's actually the chairman's allowance, which is not drawn, but we use it for odds and ends, like the drinks at the Christmas meeting. Uh, it doesn't come to me at all. Um, and he wondered why we didn't spend the budget uh, and, and whether we should give the rest to charity. We do give um, donations away a rather larger amount than that. And there's no reason why we should deal with that little uh, trifle. But he, he obviously felt that it was my expenses and it isn't actually. Um, the, and the proper title is chairman's allowance, but it's, it's misused really. It's treated as a bit of bounce for things that we can't otherwise easily pay for like the wreath that, um, that's something you, uh, that um, the British Legion probably don't realise. It's the Chairman's Allowance that pays for the contribution for the wreath each year. Um, so I will respond to all of them. I don't think there's anything here that we particularly need to discuss. Um, that, well, there's a bit of anxiety as to whether you underclaimed your expenses, even. Yes, do you want me to quickly just go through? So yes, if you want to, yeah. Because most of these are... They're straightforward. They're pretty easy what I, things. Yeah, please what do. What I do. Um, yeah, obviously it was my mistake. I put the wrong number down for the check. Put two numbers around the wrong way. So, yeah. Um, the expenses, it was... When I do my expenses, you, you all see the sheet. The first half is my expenses, and then... On this occasion, the second bit came out of the chairman's allowance. So, although I got refunded mm -hmm. because I said it was the refreshments which I paid for, so I had to put it half of it to my allowance, half of it to the chairman's allowance. But Roger only picked out yeah. that there was a bigger amount. Your expenses were smaller than you had paid because the rest went into different headings. But yes, it was the way it was split up. That's an interesting point. Okay. Yes, half of it was shown as my expenses, half of it was shown as that, but I got it all. Okay. So, yes, I did. Okay. Okay. That's understood. Um, budget, we've just talked about that bit. Um, Hillview Garage, that's where Alf chooses who he goes to, and he found it was better to go somewhere else. Um, payments list, yes, that's fair enough. I hadn't realised it came out with the numbers were all over the place. I did make it easier for him by putting batching numbers on all the invoices and stuff so he could easily find it. But I've now found if I go to a different way, I can put it in number order rather than date, date order. Well, we put it in date order before, but then for workplace pension, for instance, which half of it goes to our salary and half of it goes to the pension part that we have to pay, then same date but they put three other things in between it. So there was just, it was in data order, it goes in at the same time. But now I'll put it in number order, that sorts that out. So that Good. was that bit. Um, we've done the um, assets bit. And the other thing that um, he thought ought to be looked at, which he didn't, wasn't happy about, was this bit really. When I do, this is when we do the bank rec. So I produce the paperwork that goes with this, because I have to do, obviously do the bank rec for two accounts, <coughs> Lloyds and Unity Trust. And then we do a joint one. But obviously I'm doing one of these for each month. And he found it difficult to get these in and out of one of these. 
could I find a better way of doing it, basically? Because obviously it ends up with 12 yes. of these two. To I think you should send them to the Strict Instructions. <laughs> but that's what... Spoofedly. <laughs> that's what that bit's about. Wouldn't lose any sleep <laughs> if I'm not any of that. Tweezers. <laughs> okay, so we've had the internal auditors report, and Yvonne's explained mm -hmm. all those points well. Uh, I will reply um, to the points he's made as best I can, and I'll pass it by Yvonne so she can remind me of it I've just forgotten. Um, and then send that off to him, and I'll thank him obviously on behalf of the council for picking that up. He did it very quickly, um, and he did say actually he enjoyed doing it. He thought he understood the council a lot better mainly probably understanding what permits the lots tough it is. Okay. It was, so, clever, it was clever of you to find him. So yes. Yes. Perfect. So yes. we're happy for T Bonds idea, I think. It was clever so, of you to find him. Um, we're happy to accept the internal audit report. Okay? Good. And that there were no concerns. Right. Um, the annual return we're on now. <coughs> This is the particular FAF that we have to do now. <coughs> and that will be the the first, which is the questions. Is that it? You go. Yeah. Is that the end of government? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And right. the government's <coughs> one is first. Yeah. Do we all have to sort of. We have to go through these one at a time. Yep, okay. So, um, we have to go through these one at a time. Tedious. If you want to read them out, that's your usual party, please. Right, this is Can I see them? They're very small. Yes, I can. Good. Have you also printed out for us? Yes. Well, mine's bigger than the, the actual is bigger, so. Mm -hmm. Um, right, this is where you have to answer yes or no. We have put in place arrangements for effective financial management during the year and for the preparation of the accounting statements. Yes. Yes. We maintained an adequate system of internal control, including measures designed to prevent and detect fraud and corruption yes. and we reviewed its yes. effectiveness. Yes. We took all reasonable steps to assure ourselves that there are no matters of actual or potential non-compliance with laws regulations and proper practices that could have a significant financial effect on the ability of this authority to conduct its business or manage its finances. Yes. Yes. We provided proper opportunity during the year for the exercise of electors' rights in accordance with the requirements of the accounts and audit regulations. That's where I have to put stuff on the website yeah. and on the notice yeah. boards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you did? I did. Good. Mm -hmm. And they won't pay again. Well, I mean, they... Just up to them. They didn't ask to see anything, none of you. We carried out an assessment of the risks facing this authority and took appropriate steps to manage those risks, including the introduction of internal controls and or external insurance cover where required. Yes. We maintained throughout the year an adequate and effective system of internal audit of the accounting records and control systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We took appropriate action on all matters <coughs> raised in reports from the internal and external audit. Yep. Because that's last year, remember, mm -hmm. David brought up three things and we had gone with all those three yeah. things. <clears throat> we considered whether any litigation, liabilities or commitments, events or transactions occurring either during or after the year end have a financial impact on this authority and where appropriate to include them in the accounting statements. Well, we haven't had any, so... And then the next one doesn't apply to us, does it? Trust funds. No. Okay. So is everybody happy with us ticking them off? Yes. yes. I think I have a proposer. Paul and Leslie. And everyone else? Agree. Mm -hmm. Good. And you've got us to sign it, I think. Um, yes, you've got to do it first. Date is the 13th of the 6th. I'll put the minute number when I know it. They don't seem to think of that. Now I'm going to sign here. Mm -hmm. Strange, I signed before. 
before you do, but you know, because it's you who've done it all, so... Yeah. Well, no, because we, the council has agreed. Mm. Oh, I see, yeah, OK. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Right, fair enough. Would you like some water? Would you like some water? Right, then we can go to the other side. Right, well this is, um, we've all seen this as well, Ship with all the numbers on, which will tie up with the um, receipts and payments and things you've had last time. Mm -hmm. I've had to have signed it beforehand, this is one where I have to do it beforehand, so I did it when I did all this back in April. So, if you're all happy with that, that was the second place. Proposer. There's Lee, seconder. Mm. Alan, that one. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Right. Streetlights. This is now a, a saga that's been going on for three years. Uh, I went back in, in terms of calc to say that um, things seem to be in a bit of a, a muddle in ABC and the guy there, the person who's got the project to manage, has said he would go and ask other people in KCC whether they're actually doing this or not. Um, you know, we've had different views from different people. So it's just on the back burner for now. I might have to kill it off. As far as Wittersham is concerned, if the worst comes to the worst, they will maybe ask us to uh, take over the responsibility and the costs of about five or six street lights. Um, but some of them at least really ought to go, as far as I can see, into Ashford's housing account, because they pay for loads of others on the housing account. And there's no reason why some of them that are in what was originally their housing still is part of it. Shouldn't go the same way. It seems as what's happened is that different street lamps have gone in different accounts and they're trying to get rid of all street lights from one of their accounts and paying no attention to the other one. And I'm saying we'll just shift them across. I don't expect Housing wants to do that, but that's what I'm trying to push for. So no further. Payments for authorisation, we need to agree to reimburse you for your colour cartridges for the Xerox printer. You were very economical because I buy the genuine ones and you bought cheap ones. Thank you. Fit, well, they fit the printer. They work. If ever I what you buy seen? cheap ones, they don't fit the printer. Yeah, well, no. Well, you've you seen all this stuff that I've been printing over there. Yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> Right, so uh, we've agreed to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. good. Because we also agree here the class expenses. Um, okay, working party reports. Can I take you? <coughs> well, only that um, you all saw the uh, Calc June newsletter with Al's mm -hmm. photo in it. For Indeed. The yeah. Community Award by, mm -hmm. presented by Ken Hardington. That was very nice of them. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fair point to say that's not, of course, one for us to do because he's our employee. But it's very nice that they did. Yes, I didn't know about it beforehand. That's no stone for it, I mean. <laughs> you can find it in the shop, yeah. <laughs> right. I hope they saw it in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> Finance. We've got, therefore, to, I don't know, we come to the transaction statements next. Yes. So finance working party, I don't think there's anything to think of at the minute, is there? No, no. nothing. So we've got the monthly accounts here. Um, we'll see that I eventually got the money out of KCC for our contribution. For last year? Yes, in Sorry, May. Can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. Is this the monthly transaction statement? Yeah. Right. You only send out two documents. Can I make a request that you give them different names? Yeah. So Michael and I have the same name. Michael yeah. and I never know which one you're talking about. <laughs> the trouble is, because I have a... It, one's in the caretaker 
right. I took and the other's in finance, and they both, mm. but one is the big one. Is the big one, okay, that's fair enough. The yeah. They, yeah, it will always, the first one will always be the main one. <coughs> yes, where you see we've got the 8,000 pounds. They tried to tell me when I kept chasing it that they'd already paid it. They said they paid it in September and gave me the reference number until I pointed out that Black well, didn't invoice them until November. So sharp practice. But it's also it's also a year late. So next year they'll say they've already paid it, and we'll say no, that was the year before. Right. Uh, yes, otherwise um, I think it's all fair. As far as these two sheets are concerned, by the way, the, the, the small one is all included in the big one anyway. Just gives us yes. so we know where they are. <coughs> <the first out. coughs> mm. um, did anyone have any anxieties about what was in there? You saw that we handed out the um, prizes for the best dressed house competition, which went slightly above what we originally thought because we had a joint second prize having looked at them. The judges, as it were. But um, anyway, there we go. So can I sign them? Yes. We we bought a new litter bin. We did. We did. Yeah. For the it's community one that's going to go outside the shop. So we got two because oh, it's right. always been it's always filled filled. with mm. stuff. <laughs> Shopkeepers litter. Yes. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> so there's no excuse for walking past it without <laughs> using it. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> we should try and get sponsored, really, shouldn't we? <laughs> Thank you. To make a to right. Um, <laughs> life's too short, Paul. Oh. The yeah, um, caretaker scheme's <laughs> end of year <laughs> statement and the budget <clears> with <throat> the amendment. This is the caretaker scheme runs a month late because it started a month late, 12 years ago. Um, and uh, so we've now got this uh, budget yeah. out from... Well, we had it uh, last month, but if you remember... It because right, of the pay rise. Yes, when we changed the amount. Yeah. Indeed, for the budget. So Are we happy with that? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's one thing you do know, that we're 10,000 over what's coming in. Because we didn't get the eight thousand. We know what we budget for. We're always over. Okay, and that's because we've put in a load of um, amounts that go to the reserve. Yes, I mean. It, this is how. This is our actual expected income yes. with the eight included. I mean, I mean, I can't. Obviously, we get. We've had a regular amount in from Wareborn, but we we never budget. And budgeted, we, we never can't budget, budget, we budget, budget, budget because it's for. down to them as to whether they. Okay. But, like but basically, that's our usual income apart yes. from those two councils, and then this amount here is well over, as you yes. say, um, and. The reason that's not a problem, if you like, is because actually we've always had a healthy, we've got a healthy healthful balance, balance and we don't in fact usually therefore need the mm. reserves. Mm. But that, that is more, that's more out of kilter than usual. Yes. Sure, I understand. I understand. And in effect, that's, that's what we were discussing last time. It was, it was the same last time, but we've made it a bit worse. Mm. <coughs> right. <coughs> okay. Agenda. Um, so, planning decisions that we've received. The um, Poplar Road 37 is the old telephone exchange, which went through very quickly. We, we supported that, it went through. And Knoll House, uh, I think we 
supported, and it certainly has gone through. Was and, it there, um, hmm. The uh, garden wall at 12 Poplar Road, the old post office, hmm. went through, we supported. And, and they're not on here. No, the extras just come in the yeah. of the <coughs> Woodisham Road, which was below tree barn. Which we objected to and it's been refused. So we got four out four. Oh. Yes. Uh, it was their idea that it was quick. They, they must have oh, it. Oh, they didn't, they didn't want it. She produced more than one version of these <laughs> Right, okay, open spaces. Is that the end of that matter, do you think? No. <laughs> end of the chapter. No. For now. Don't know. For now. Yeah. For now. Um, open spaces. Have they? Yes. They um, um, they've dried up, haven't they? <laughs> 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 Very well. <That's> totally <laughs> now we're <laughs> breaking our ankles on the ruts. Are you controlling them regularly then? I do actually some of them, yes. Well done. Highways? We just carry on with that. Yes, and also that you saw the um, response I got from KCC <coughs> on the complaint about the servicing the pound lane. Ridiculous. Yes, and there's obviously a lot on next door about that. And I today I've been copied into correspondence um, between Jane and Peter Burnett and Winston Michael, who is the chair of ABC's Joint Transport Board. They've got him involved on the speed in Pinkwater Road. Oh, right. I thought the chairman of the JTB was Paul Bar um, Bartlett. Pa no, it's just changed, changed since the election. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes, changed. so when I've done it, this was between the two of them, but I got included into it. So I have gone back to both of them and explained what we're doing on the um, hips. Although I had already told Mrs Burnett that uh, we were hoping to do something with the speed there. Okay. And he said, thank you very much, he appreciated that. And I will keep them up to date with anything that's going on. All right. Can I just make a comment on highways? <coughs> um, there's been quite a lot of patching, people have noticed, it, it, but it really is about the minimum size patch that you could possibly get. So watch this space because it'll degrade by the end of the summer probably. Sure. The bit opposite the Swan and Mervyn down there, all the patches are now starting to sink. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't notice it too much in a car or a lorry, but motorbikes and the cyclists, so we mentioned that, going around that corner. With the, the road sinking like that, that's, that's, that's an accident waiting to happen. Um, and I just think we should flag it. And the other point is that, I don't know if anyone else saw it, but David Brazier, who is the cabinet member for highways, made the most extraordinary mm. broadcast the other day, where he basically said, the new strategy is managed decline mm. in Kent. And if we don't do it, we're going bankrupt. Mm. And well, I he also said they were going to close quite a lot of roads. Close a lot of the country roads, yeah. Uh, but when he, he said marriage decline. I gather there's been a little bit of a conversation behind the scenes. Oh, I think so. He might have said that without necessarily the full support of the uh, of the of the cabinet. Uh, there's, there's a rumbling in, in the cabinet hugely because that might he might have told what's happening, but marriage decline is just not acceptable. Right? It's it's a good good. I get so maybe he felt it, it should be said. Well, I think the key thing is that all, the, the only way we can get stuff, we just have to sort of agitate stroke report, which mm -hmm. is Yvonne's advice to us all the time anyhow, if there is something. Um, and it's at, literally outside my house, the middle of the road starts to sink in the middle by that that much. There's a huge rut right in the middle. Mm -hmm. We have to be impressed that when they do have something reported down, they actually sometimes come out incredibly quickly. Yes. Like they eventually, that, up. Like that flood up. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, they were out yeah. the same day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, extraordinary, really. So perhaps they had you know, rather the things to do for a change. I think the key thing is is what was also reported on next door that, that we, we the, you know, it's, you know, what are the parish council doing about it? And, that? <laughs> and there were a couple of residents who gave very considered reply that basically who understood what our function and our level of authority is and told it as it really is that all we can do is report it, but that doesn't stop any member of the public going online and reporting it themselves. Sure. Um, maybe we maybe we should um, remind them in the next outlook that, that you know of, of that because uh, I think sometimes people in the heat of the moment forget that they have that opportunity to do it themselves. As far as David Brady is concerned, his earlier say was, uh, and I'm 
not quite sure when this came out. I only got it a couple of weeks ago, but I think it was earlier, where he wrote to all the joint transportation boards that there's one for every district council or borough council. And as far as I can tell, it went to all of them. And this is what I, I kind of hinted at earlier, where he wrote to say that Kent County Council were not in the business of refusing applications for planning. They felt their job was to approve them, uh, unless they felt there were serious safety risks. And uh, this was a two-page note. Uh, and it went on to say, um, don't complain about the roads being overloaded or about queues or whatever. That's the way it is. And if the houses are built and they make it worse, then don't blame us, um, because everywhere else is worse anyway, and you just have to put up with it. That's roughly what it said. I figured that you would get it in the neck from some other county councillors. I assume you did. I hope so. Um, and uh, then there was this broadcast, which I have heard about, um, saying that... Uh, the, the funny thing is that somewhere just now, um, I don't remember where it was, but I have seen them acknowledging that they do have a duty to look after the roads. They always tell us about the duty to do the social care for children and adults, mm -hmm. and that's where all the money goes. Um, they do have a duty for roads. Well, they've got a duty, and they've got a duty to themselves, because if they do neglect them and it's shown that, then I would have thought they're open to litigation. Sure. Yeah, they're just weeds. It's actually closing three recycling centres. Um, and someone pointed out that there might be um, a related massive increase in fly tipping. Oh, but they don't do that. The district has to do that. Yeah. But it's still, it's still there. I, I suspect he's not looking to, the, to, re to stand again in the next election. But that, Casey seems to be honest. Casey Z is falling hard, it seems to me. They are under pressure, obviously. Um, they need to take serious, because the government won't let them, you know, they've got their cap unless they have a referendum. Um, the money is all being spent uh, in vast amounts in certain places, and they. I don't, yeah. They, I, I mean, it may be that they have made big cuts in their staff, but I have not heard anything about it. Um, and that's the only thing they're going to be able to do, really. When I qualified in 1975, my consultant took me aside and he said, Alan, well, welcome to the team. You do realise the health service will completely collapse within six months. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> <laughs> that was 1975. I think making a personal comment on that is a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so public rights of way. They're dry. <laughs> Uh, cemetery churchyard. Yeah. Looks quite tidy, nicely cut again. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. What I had, haven't said before is um, that I did meant to mention that you probably noticed that it, Alf went, well, I suggested he went with the half of it, no go May. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the left hand side, the older bit, yes. we left and it's all been beautifully flowered and nobody's complained, so that's. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I think, yes, it's managed neglect on one side, and yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, well, that's what. Maybe we should put Alf in charge of the road, Nick. Managed neglect on one side, and the other side he didn't bother to mow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not fair. <laughs> one side is looking really lovely. It is, it is looking very nice. Yes. Really done, though, yes right. And mm. I meant to show you a photo, I sent a photo actually. Our um, oak tree. Oh, in leaf. Got lots of leaves on it. Oh, well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the bishop's prayer did well. I was going to say, well yeah. done, Mrs. Despite bishop. the dry weather. Yes. Mrs. Bishop, yes. Okay, yeah, next meeting it. we've got in the diary in July. Um, one item for information from me. Uh, we did look at a draft paper on approach to risk mitigation and control. Mm -hmm. Um, and unfortunately, it got forgotten in the agenda this month, so it'll be on next month. That was something we were committed to do, and, and we've all looked at the draft, but obviously we can't approve it till we approve it, and we can't approve it when it's not on the agenda. So that will be deferred till next month. Um, any other things for information? Before? And um, just to remind you that the couple of the learning event things, we've got the planning one in Tenston Town Hall. It's just we've got things locally. It just seems a shame that 
and the annual councillors' conference. Let's just go everybody and see in Appledore on the 6th of July. It's just normally we have to go in yeah. there and everywhere, yeah. you know, with fun and, and well. then it's just these are close by. We just thought it would be. When is the planning one intended? To be? Well, there's the the planning one is 21st of June, okay. um, but I can when I looked at the and uh, the councillors' conference, it seems to be including that in the afternoon session there. Okay. So the 6th of July one is an all day one, 9:30 4:30. Whereas the other one's a 6.30 evening one, mm. on the 21st of June. But just close by it would be. Mm. Just thought I would bring that to your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alan. Nothing else. Sorry, no. Sue? Um, just a reminder that it's the Mal Boris Police Choir on Saturday evening at the church, 7.30, if anybody would like to attend. Thank you. Ashley. 7.30. Oh, 7.30. I know, I see it in the... Um, perhaps we ought to mention, just for your diaries, there mm. is a... It's a long way in, in the future, though. There's a two choirs concert. First of October. Mm. First of October. Mm. Which is <coughs> for, very much for your diaries, because it's... That was quite an important event. He's bringing the choir down from London. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So it's about four thirty in the afternoon. That's only what time. It's a Sunday afternoon. I'm not sure the exact time. That's to be confirmed. Okay. It's in my diary for sure. <coughs> uh, okay. No. Um, Leslie. No. Uh, yeah. Um, I just need to be guided. Really. The, the, the number of people have mentioned the. Um, the problem that started to uh, occur down, is it Blackwall Bridge? Down the street. Mm -hmm. We have a huge amount of rubbish that's been left behind. Lots of broken glass. Um, I'm not quite sure where the boundary is because at Pee Wee's house, the boundary for Kent doesn't seem to be the river. It's the, the sign has got, go, goes up about 100 yards in. So the, is there rather the boundary? And no. then it's no. not. So the rather is in Sussex. The boundary is the midpoint of the river, as it used to be when it didn't, when it wasn't canalised. So Ordnance Survey back okay. in Victorian so, times would have decided where the midpoint right. of the old river was. So the far bank, which which county is that in, or which which parish? The far is that bank in? will definitely be the, the well, not the bank of the river as it is now. The far bank of when it would where it would have been is definitely in Sussex, and the near bank is definitely in. <laughs> Kent, and the line will go between the two. That's but where they canalised, the it class. doesn't necessarily go along the middle. So, so, so all the rubbish that's on the left-hand side. Well, here's the border. And the broken block. This is between Kent and this oh, is right. Kent, and that's sorry. Sussex. Oh, I assume Bridge. the border went. There. Hang on a minute. <laughs> no, that's the way it went. Okay, so there's so where's the road from here? This is the road. Oh, oh this way. Yes, right. Okay, right. So, so, so I'm driving here. Right, so let's drive down the road. Let's drive down the road. Definitely. Right, and we get to the bridge. Yeah, and so who's all this bit here? Have you seen what's going on there? No. Well, speak to Joe Joe Terry and Carl Terry and all the other people, the artists down there. The abuse they suffered. They had stuff thrown at them. Uh, the broken glass over there. There were, there were, I, I, I think several people have been down and picked for yes, pick it. Have they? Have they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. I went was that the other day, yeah. you know, but, but I'm just, I didn't know whether it was in our parish or whether it was well, in. Well, if it's that, you see, this is, this is going to be the line. Okay, so it's, 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 it's there. Sussex. Yeah, so that's, if it's this side, then. If it's yeah. that, if it's that South Bank, yeah. whose is that? Well, that bit is ours and that bit is. Goes into so that's the, that's the boundary. So the, the, the South Bank is ours. Okay. Well, I think it was, the number mentioned it, and they said it's something that should be raised. Someone said, um, "Could we get the community police involved?" And I had to politely point out, I didn't think we had because yes. we haven't at the moment. Because oh, the announcement. That's Newbridge. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's no, I understand that. But uh, it's just it's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a situation or an example of where people look to us. To show some sort of leadership, mm -hmm. and there's not a great deal we can do. But if it is in our parish, which it looks like it is, then um, I'm 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 so pleased to hear people have been down there and cleared cleared up. Mm -hmm. 
Um, they haven't managed to clear all the broken glass that no. 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 So if we have an incident with a load of broken glass in our parish, what do we know what, what it's do we do? From? Is it just people throwing bottles at each other? Or? It sounded like the weather got warmer. Yeah, I think it, there was quite a lot of nakedness there when I came across <laughs> Blackwall Bridge <laughs> at, at 10 to 7 this evening. There was quite, yeah, Naked, yesterday. Naked, um, nakedness. Well, real nakedness. Real nakedness. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen it all before, Alan. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Not at Blackwall Bridge, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I, I, somebody mentioned it and they asked me to raise it, so I raised it. Uh, and well, there's two issues, aren't there? One is the antisocial behaviour, which yeah. we haven't got anyone in the village who's I'm perhaps the any law uh, enforcement. I don't think we start vigilante groups. The, the police have, are and just, the other one is the rubbish. Yeah, the police well, are just beginning to reorganise themselves. Um, hmm? they ha- the police are just beginning to reorganise themselves. They, the start of the new neighbourhood yeah, policing system has begun but they haven't fully staffed it yet. We have the name of the PC who's our contact. I have sent an, uh, an email this afternoon to the inspector who runs the community safety unit, um, Simon Johnson, to ask him, because of the point that Yvonne made, that um, PC Daly said that he covers nine wards, and I've questioned whether that was an error and he meant nine parishes, because the police aren't always very clear about wards uh, as turned out as we found out at the meeting with the the commissioner and the um the acc um they what they asked they, they talked about wards and when they were asked do you mean wards in parishes or wards in districts they said no i don't know um so i mean nine wards as yvonne pointed out is pretty extraordinary because there's mm. four parishes in one ward no, here. Yeah. Not always. I mean, Bittenden is one ward. Um, but, you know, nine wards would be a hell of a lot. But it may be that he's simply only the contact rather than yeah. the person what does. And I will ask that question. Can if, we, it may be that we can get Can we, as a parish on. council, draw PC Daddy's Attention. attention to mm. what's going on at least and at least they've got on record I think that, that, is perfectly, that is perfectly reasonable we have that, I mean this is the reason they've done all this now yeah. mm. they've put PCs into local policing on a named basis whereas previously it was only the PCSOs who were named mm. um, and uh, each man and he sent his thing out saying you know I'm here But I'll also well, see what Johnson comes. I think Johnson will come back fairly quickly and tell me what the score is. Because he knows me from Cal. I came across it from the Ivan side yesterday afternoon, probably around about half past two, no, quarter to three. And uh, I, I, there were about 12 cars there, mainly hatchbacks, little hatchbacks. And I would say there were probably about 30 or 40 people. And, and typically, and it's difficult to say this without sort of, you know, making great sweeping statements, but the vast majority of people were not school children or college students. You know, they, they were sort of, I would say, late 20s, early 30s, which I think, given it was a Monday afternoon, but there were the hordes of them. I were didn't spot any they, nakedness, but then maybe I was at the wrong were time. Were they there for a bevy or for dipping skinny or other? I have no idea. They were all running around and it was, it just seemed to be an odd time, Monday mm-hmm. afternoon. But um, and, and I rather suspect. I rather suspect. Now I was coming back from Bexhill actually. No, they, not you. They. Uh, I rather suspect that, that the, the vehicles were not from this village. I don't think it's it's mm. a bunch of. I, I came past about one thirty, and there were about ten early twenties mm. lads in shorts, obviously jumping from the mm. bridge and then running yeah. back round and. Yeah. I used to when I was a teenager. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> get brained or drowned eventually. Well, if we can just send a note to, to, to Delhi. Delhi? Delhi, yeah. Peace yeah I think his title is temporary, it says, on the yes. email. Well, that's because they haven't fully started. Well, it's not going to be very sort of um, reassuring, is it, when the new bulletin goes out and says that our new chap is temporary. They have spent about two years getting this new system into place, mm. and, and as it started, which was on the something of June, 6th or something, mm. then it was not fully staffed, they've still got people mm. coming. And he said, the, he said, he said the vacancies, yeah. 
We were told very clearly at the last meeting with the PCC that they have now got more police officers than ever before. They have actually done more than catching up, either have or they will when their wives come out of college. Wonder where they are. I, I agree with you. Who does the land belong to, Jeremy? Who does the land belong to? Banks of them, you know. Probably is it under private ownership or is it... We have a planning for someone who wants to put a campsite. Yes, that was yeah, outside, on the outside, on the outside, wasn't it? You see, I would imagine, I would have thought it would be Peace Marsh because, all right, we have that little bit, but most of it was in East Sussex. So whoever owns that land... But when we had that planning application for the other side of the mm. road, we were asked, mm. and... Peace Marsh were asked, we were yes. both, because we both had it. Neighbours. But I mean, who's responsible for those? Could be the environment agency. The environment agency, agency are definitely responsible for that pumping station, mm. uh, if that's where it is. Um, was that only on your one, my road? The pumping stations will be EAs. EA took over whatever the National Rivers Authority had, but I don't know if National Rivers Authority ever used to own those medium-sized rivers. Well, I think we should, I think should write, to, write to the PC copy in our new ward councillor. Just so he's um, oh, yeah. uh, He's taking a great interest. He wrote me yesterday, apologised very much for not yeah. being able to come today. And uh, <coughs> he also briefed me on the uh, Oxley Alba um, um, uh, decision last week at the committee. I mean, and, Dan uh, was saying, should we put some litter bins down there? Well, if we put little bins down there, we then spread it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see, I don't. We can't put it on somebody else's land. Well, that's on it. Who's, mm. who's yes. Who it belongs well, to. Once again, it's going to be the landowner on the, on the other side, I would imagine. Mm. And then we'll be the ones I'm thinking will be getting really upset about this. Mm. Well, it might be in our parish, but that's. Ashford might know, if, if, if you ask Ashford, but I mean, it definitely requires another thing, Ashford might know who owns it. In any event, they can probably look up land registry documents that we can't easily. Well, again, if we found out who owned it, at least we can. Yeah. CCTV on the pumping station. There you go. <laughs> we can notify them of our concern okay. and what yeah. they need to do about it. Okay. That's it then. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations for staying until the end. Thank you. It's been interesting. Thank you very much. Just echo that comment, but it's been interesting. Thank you very much. It's interesting to see Parish Councillor.